I, I, I hate to do it, but I'd be like, I gotta grind a lot of it. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Um, thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, those of you who have showed up, who walked out of class to join us here um, to say DOD off campus, Crane off campus. We don't want our tuition dollars funding murder, funding slaughter, funding genocide. Thank you for being here today. The Israelis bombed the Lahia district in southern Beirut. And, and let me let you in on a little information. There's a reason why there's something in the Zionist army called the Lahia Doctrine. It's a doctrine in which you cannot effectively combat resistance forces, therefore, you target civilians, you target collective populations in order to afflict the most punishment possible. There's a reason why the Dahia is in the name of the Dahia Doctrine. Now they dropped one of these bombs, not one actually, 85 tons worth of these bombs on a densely populated neighborhood. And the reports were coming in and said one, two killed, three maybe. And people were saying, no, 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 that's not that the people in these houses, bodies were literally incinerated by these bombs, that there was nothing left. There was nothing left for them to bury. There was nothing left for them to remember. And you have to ask yourself the implications of your tuition dollars in this funding, not only in this political moment, because this political moment is a tr global transformation. It is a sign that the Western neoliberal order the one built off the war crimes in Vietnam, the war crimes in Iraq, the war crimes in Afghanistan, the one built on hundreds if not millions of bodies is crumbling. The rules of engagement by this order have crumbled to their original means, that of violence, of murder, because everything here was built on that. This order was built on exploitation of the global south, exploitation of these countries, taking their raw resources. And now in this global transformation, we have to ask ourselves the implication of these institutions in that. These institutions are serving as research areas so that the military industrial complex can bolster itself. These are the sites where the military industrial complex gathers where it gives the administration money, where it gives a small group of people a lot of money to uh, do a lot of bloody research. And it's naive, it's naive to think that this research doesn't implicate every single person. We should be horrified by the implications that are happening now. The 300,000 people murdered, the 2,000 people that were, have been murdered in Lebanon in two weeks. That should outrage us. But it is also naive to think that that violence that is unleashed upon these people will not be unleashed upon every single person who is complicit, every single person who allows these institutions to do that. In a world where we face a, glowing, a growing climate crisis in which hurricanes in the south are decimating infrastructure and people are being evacuated in its place, we have to ask ourselves what position will we be in? Will we be refugees fighting to find anything while the people who hold the means of everything, who have managed to get all this blood money, do everything to prevent us from this? Will we be implicated? Will we have this force unleashed upon us? I mean, we've seen just an ounce of it. We've seen just an ounce of this institution be willing to unleash this kind of force on its students. We've seen an ounce of it. And it was jarring for most students here, but it really is just an ounce. Because in 2019, when Gazans went to their border, when they went to demand the end of the occupation, you know what they were, they demanded peacefully. They demanded with their families. Hundreds of thousands went to the border and they were met with snipers that fired. Not the ones that watched us on campus. These snipers fired on children, on families. And it was you, they used weaponry that not only 
fired, but it exploded once it hit. Children's amputated. Their legs gone, arms gone, hundreds killed. And we have to think that this is just the beginning of that kind of violence. That Gaza is just an example that this world order is trying to make out of a group of people who dare to live with dignity, who dare to want to aspire of a life where they can walk with their family, where they can see their homeland from the river to the sea, because that's where Palestine is. They can see the beauty of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. They can see the beauty of the mountains near the Lebanese border. They can see the Dead Sea on the border of Jordan. That's all they ask, dignity. And they're met with this genocidal violence. They're met with the war machine that is being produced on this campus, that is being researched, that is being aided on this campus. So what will you all do? Gaza has set an example. It has set the tone. The Gazan people have dared to fight for their dignity on behalf of the entire globe, on behalf of every single person who aspires to be free, every single person who aspires to live on their land, every single person who aspire, aspires to have a life of dignity with their family, with their loved ones. Where will you fall? Will you let it happen? Will you be complicit in the murder of others? Will you have the hubris to think that it doesn't affect you? Will you have the moral decadence to think even if it doesn't affect you, you still shouldn't care? You'll just wait until it happens to you? Until your loved ones start dying? Until your loved ones are in prison? Until your loved ones are faced in crisis with no avail? Will you wait for that? I'd like to think no one here would. That's exactly why we're here. Because we're not waiting. We're not standing by as an entire population is slaughtered, but the State Department will say, well, maybe Israel has done a few war crimes. A few war crimes, and we've seen it. You don't need people to tell you what you've seen. You see it on your screens. You see it every day. I mean, God, there's videos. A Palestinians in these prisons being gang raped to death, things you couldn't even imagine. Is that the global order that we want? No, that's why we're here. We'll continue to be here. We'll continue to challenge the institution because this institution should be made for the students, those who participate in it, those who have a say, those who deserve to have a say. That should be how the institution is run, by students who say, I don't want my tuition dollars going towards genocide. I don't want my tuition dollars going towards my friends, families being murdered. I don't want my tuition dollars being used for crimes against humanity that will be listed in history books that people will come back to and say, how did we let this happen? That people will come back and say, were you silent? Did you not do anything? Did you stand by while it happened? So we need to continue to come out. This is just one aspect, okay? And you, you come out in every way that you can because reality is, again, when genocide is happening, it's, it's the pinnacle of everything. You think about everything that befalls our society. You think about what undergirds the problems of society. You think about racism. You think about misogyny. You think about ableism. You think about all of these things that lead to the decadence of society and every single one of it is being focalized in Gaza right now. Every single one of these aspects is being combined to wipe out an entire population. Every single one, no matter what standpoint in society we are in, we need to care about the highest of crimes that is taking place in Gaza right now with these tuition dollars, with these criminals having a meeting on our campus today paying for and going to a university that uses our money, our tuition, to fund bombs that murder the people of Palestine and now other Arab countries. We go to a university that brings out snipers and IOF trained state police on their own students for protesting genocide. We go to a university that treats us as animals 
for opposing and being disgusted by hundreds of thousands of innocent people dying at the hands of the terrorist state. They have refused to listen to our cries, our desperation for my people to stop being indiscriminately bombed. They have ignored and spit on our demands for divestment from funding a literal terrorist state. They have, e allowed, they have allowed even enabled Zionists to treat us as subhumans, harass us, Nazis salute us, and wish the absolute worst upon us and the people of Palestine. They have tried time and time again to fester apprehension and fear in our souls so that they can impose the same silence we've been under for the last 75 plus years. But we refuse to stay silent. We will continue speaking. We will continue being obnoxious about our presence and our demands until they listen to us. We will stand firm and strong in our actions, efforts, demands, our want for a free Palestine. The same exact way the people of Gaza are stubbornly and resiliently keeping their culture alive. Nothing they do or say can stop us. I refuse to allow this university to silence us, demean us, for asking for, for, asking for the most basic of things, human rights, liberation, and a free Palestine. Palestine will be free! Brick by brick, wall by wall! Brick by brick, wall by wall! Shut it down! 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 Shut it